Can you be, can you, everyone, can you please ready? Okay, hello, everybody. Hello, Dante. Everyone, can you please unmute? Can you put your hand at your chest? Everyone say, hello, venerable sir. Hello, sir. Okay, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you again. There are not many people today, so hopefully we will enjoy this class as a little group. But I see some more people are still coming. So let's sit in a comfortable meditation posture. Make sure your back is erect. Side cast down. Uh, this is not a meditation posture. So do you know how to sit in a meditation posture? Okay, that looks much better. Very well. Uh, do you have something under your bum or something like that? It looks almost as if you are sitting on a bare floor which could be quite painful for your feet so you may like to take a blanket or a carpet are you sitting on a carpet what do you have on your no so you may like to take some blanket or something so that it's soft it needs to be a little soft you know otherwise you will uh otherwise it's painful for your feet Okay, now you got something. All right, you will see if it is not comfortable, it means it's not right. So next time you will have to take something softer. So we can sit in a comfortable meditation posture. Uh, Isabella, I worry that this is not correct posture. Can you maybe open the knees a little more so that you have all, all legs on the floor? Very well. You can erect the back. Cast the side down, and we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And with that determination, we can gently lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. We allow it to be heavy. And changing. We continue to the forehead, eyes, nose, lips, chin. Cheeks, ears, back of the head, we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the head to be heavy and changing.
We continue to the neck, shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, tips of fingers, chest, abdomen, back, We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be heavy and changing. We continue to the buttocks, thighs, knees, calves, heels, Souls, toes, tips of toes, we allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the body to be heavy. and changing. And we allow all of the body parts to be changing. And as we give the freedom to the body to be the way it is, we ourselves achieve freedom from worry about the body. Let's enjoy this freedom. Let's watch this peace.
And now we can share our peace with other living beings. We start in our room and we gradually expand. May all beings in this room be in peace. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace. May all beings on this planet be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. Now, because the time for this sitting is finished, let's make the last determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, 
I will always be calm. And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. And when we have changed the way of our sitting, let's take one more minute to enjoy the peace we gained in meditation while we are not moving at all. Very well. So I would like to ask everybody to come close to your video, to your device, to your camera. And we'll ask your big question. How many times did you meditate the last seven days? So, please notice the question on your device. We are waiting for your answer. I don't see anyone answering. Because you asked one person. Tutam, I think you did not, did not post the poll properly. What do you think about that? Um, or maybe you included that. me in the people who have to answer. So then I did not see the results. I would like to see the results. Am I co-host? I'm not. Oh my God. And no, because uh, I think we'll have to vote again. Can yes, you see the result? Yes, one day. Okay, so just uh, tell me, what's the result? Can I take the picture of the same You can just tell me. Uh, yes, one day. So we have, yes, we have 10 students and about 70% uh, who meditated uh, about three to four days a week and about 10% Five to six days. Mm. Mm. And 20% seven days. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks good. So it seems that we have pretty good result, right? Did I understand correctly? So 90% of the people here meditated at least three days, right? But yes, okay. not that many who meditated uh, five, five to seven Altogether, how many percent? Five to seven days. Uh, Thirty percent given day. So wait, five to six is how many? Or four to five is how many? Four to uh, five to six is ten percent given day, and seven is twenty percent given. I day. see. So actually, only thirty percent. Uh, yeah. Only thirty percent meditated. Uh, the good amount. 
Okay, that's good. So I would like to encourage you everybody to meditate a little more because we don't have many people who meditated that much. See if you can add one more day. Everybody, see if you can add one more day to your uh, to your weekly meditations. So if you meditated three, three times this week, you can meditate four times. If you meditated four times, you can meditate five times. If you meditated five times, you can meditate six times. So that gradually there is an improvement. You can reduce the time of your meditation, but make sure that you meditate every day. As soon as you see that you can meditate every day, then that's the time when you increase the time of your meditation. Mind is tricky. Mind will always try to lead you towards laziness. So unless you have a special, special strategy to deal with your mind's trickiness, it will be very difficult for you to maintain everyday meditation. All right, so let's ask the second question. Uh, when did you do your homework? okay okay so we definitely have some people who did it on the same day or the next day so that is a progress to people all right so not many but it is definitely a progress um but uh i think you can do better okay so i would like to encourage everybody here to do the homework today or latest tomorrow so that you don't need to think about it and so that you're not included in the list of the people who did not submit the homework which the organizers are uh, paste, posting in the Viber group about two days before the class so it's better if you so it's better if you um, can do your homework on the day or the next day when it's assigned so that you don't have to think about it at all. Okay, so seems like we are getting some progress. Something seems to be happening. Now next week, there will be probably some holidays, at least in the Czech Republic. I don't know whether in your countries, but some people will have holidays next week for two days. That's maybe national holiday. Uh, so uh, we shall see how many students will be coming. Um, try to come on time okay when I came here we we're here like five students or four students and and gradually people people were, co were coming and coming try to come exactly on time see if you can do that all right it's a it's a very good habit and if you do not get it in the childhood then it's very hard to get it when you become adult that is the best time to start try to come exactly at the same time or five minutes earlier that also works all right so let's move on to the homework so i will ask the tom to such as three people who will be doing their who will be reading their homework after we finish this book there may be some book and there may be not and instead of reading book, we will be watching some videos. But the videos actually will be pretty filled with a lot of very important information. So it will not be pleasurable. It will probably not be leisurable. It will probably be a lot of new information. And I will ask you to write notes from that. But uh, that's what, that is what's, what is coming. 
I see that with these classes, with the grade 1 and grade 4, we are very fast. We are like faster than I was ever with any other class before. So our progress is very fast. That what I previously did for one or two years with other students, I'm doing within six months with you. So we are very fast. And that's good. So you learn more knowledge within a shorter time. So we can get to topics that I usually don't talk about. Usually I like to talk about supernatural, about Nibbana, about meditation, about Kamma. But uh, as soon as uh, the people can get through all these things, can get through these so-called, I call it basics, then um, we get to the traditional things like the Mangala Sutta and Ratana Sutta and um, some um, ethical things and some rituals and things. So that's what I usually keep as the very last thing because it's not so much interesting to me. Everybody knows it. Or those who have learned about it, they know it. But not everybody knows about enlightenment, about meditation, about kamma, about the deeper philosophy of matter and mind. So I like to teach the difficult first and the easy later. So we will be able to get through a lot thanks to the fact that we are so fast. So I'm very happy that you are doing your homework. Continue doing your homework because that is the essence of our classes. So let's uh, listen to the homework from Tum Chi, Kanvan, and Jack. Do we have Jack? Are you sure we are talking about Jack or did you mean Jake? Yes, Jake, Stephen. Jake. Okay, so uh, Jake, please raise your hand. So let's start with Fam Tum Chi. You will need to use your diacritics in your name. Otherwise, there is no way how I can pronounce it correctly. And don't think that I will remember it if it's correct one time. Not at all. Okay. So you need to use uh, the proper diacritics. And I would like to ask the organizers before I come, as you are patiently waiting for me to come, first check the people's names. You, you have, with Burmese, you see, no such problem, okay? No such problem with the Burmese names. Only the Vietnamese names need to be sometimes a little, uh, a little, say that, completed. Okay, so let's start with Pham Tung Chi. We deprivation inhibits the necessary synaptic pruning or, or the entire body and mind. Another study found that teenagers are more likely to report suicidal thoughts at ages 15 to 17 than adolescents with good sleep habits. Yes, this is so extremely important. Very well chosen sentences. Yes, very well. So if you do not sleep enough, then your uh, brain cannot develop sufficiently fast. So then you will have mess in the brain, literally mess. Because that what should be pruned, that what should be cut off, is not cut off. And so if you want to put something new, the, the uh, brain doesn't have sufficient system. The brain is not able to provide sufficient, uh, a sufficient um, potential, uh, which it can do if you sleep enough. And then uh, suicide. It's come on. It's come on. But see... People don't do suicide more than one time. There's only one time. So that's pretty bad, you know. There is no way to do suicide two times. It's only one time. We will be talking more about suicide after we finish this book. Uh, we have three amazing lectures that we will be looking at. But for the time being, this is what you get. And um, to prevent um, lack of... Uh, to prevent lack of your brain potential and to improve your brain so that it's at its 100% potential and to, pre uh, to maintain your happiness, health and intelligence and abilities is necessary to sleep enough and that's 9 hours a day.
So somehow you need to do it. I think the best way to do it is to go to sleep earlier. If you can go to sleep at nine and wake up in the morning at six, well, then you have your nine hours. All right. If you go to sleep at eight, well, before nine, maybe it's a little too early, right? But if you can go to sleep at nine and then you can go to sleep at, uh, then you can wake up at six and that's pretty good. Our classes, as you can see, our class is on your Friday, okay, in Vietnam. And that's your late at night. That's your 10, right? Your 10 p.m. But tomorrow is Saturday. So if we finish at 10.30, then you have still one and a half hours for this day. And to finish up your nine hours, you need to sleep 7.30. So if you wake up at 7.30, then, then you're pretty well off. You slept nicely nine hours. And who of you wakes up earlier than 7.30 on Saturday? Okay, so you can happily sleep nine hours. You can do it. Some people are happy if they sleep less. But you need to, you probably need to experiment a little to find out what uh, is the sufficient time for you for sleeping and then maintain it uh, as much as you can. Okay. So, Jing Mo Kan Van. Sleep deprivation inhibits the necessary synaptic to bringing or prioritizing of information. Mm. Uh, one unfortunate consequence of sleep deprivation in, in everyone, but especially in teenagers, is that increasingly insomniacs are too are turning into artificial stimulants to keep themselves awake during the day. Yeah, that's right. Artificial stimulants. I suppose that this, these are devices such as playing games and things. Oh, listening to music. Listening to music can keep you awake up pretty well. But after some time, it's quite painful and it's boring. So be careful. In the beginning, listening to music can definitely help you and can in increase your productivity. But after some time, it can become quite boring, especially if you are not skillful to make a long, long, very interesting playlist. But even, even if you have playlists with like 200 or 500 songs, still 500 songs become boring after some time. It's amazing how the brain can just get bored after some time. So, yeah, silence is the best. When you have silence, then the mind actually works a little better. It's a little more intelligent than if you have music. Even the classical music becomes boring after some time. So, yeah, you will see as the time goes, you will find out what works for you. And Jake? Japanese researchers found that teens who used their cell phones after lights out not only had reduced sleep, reduced time of sleep, but were also at increased risk of mental health disorders. Mm. And according to one recent study, each teen sends an average of 3,300 texts every month. Girls average more, 4,050 texts a month. Mm. Okay, yes, that's definitely interesting. But I think we are gradually getting less and less texts, right? Jake, what do you think? Do, do people text as much as they did, let's say, 10 years ago? Uh, I don't think so. You don't think, uh, I don't you, think I'm sending 3,000 texts a month. <laughs> that's an average, right? So you could be at the lower tier, which reduces, which reduces the average from 6,000 to 330, <laughs> 3,300. <laughs> you need to have some people down, you know, so that you decrease the extremes. So definitely there are people who send a lot. But yeah, a month is actually not so much, you know. So that's just 100 texts. So you send a hello. The other person sends hello. You say, how, how old are you? Or how are you? The other person says, how are you? And then you already have sent two, two texts, right? 
You just need 98 more for that day and you're good. Okay, just 100 for, per month, uh, per day, sorry. And some people text much more than that, you know, because they have it like, I definitely send more messages than 100 messages per day. I'm pretty sure if I combine all Zoom, Viber, and email, I surely send more than 100. And I don't use Messenger. I don't use WhatsApp. I don't use SMS, not at all. And sometimes I don't open Viber even for a whole week. And sometimes I check email only in the evening. And still I think I send in average about 100. Because there are some times, you know, when I need to just go back and forth, back and forth resolving a problem. So we go, let's say, 100, 200 messages just within 30 minutes. It goes very fast, need to resolve a problem. So it's actually pretty easy to send it. Um, but then uh, the question is, when do you do it and what's the purpose? Do you do it because you're resolving something that helps you, for example, for education? For example, you have somebody who's, uh, who's helping you to learn maths or history or philosophy or whatever you're studying. Well, then that makes sense, right? Making 100 and even 1,000 is, is worth it. But uh, if it is uh, arguing and uh, using abusive words and blaming one other, one another or backbiting or things like that well then that's not so good ladies usually uh, are more talkative because that's how they deal with their stress men deal with their stress by exercise by physical activities but ladies usually deal with their stress by talking that's the way how they are how they're made or how they're grown that's no problem but um Again, it's good if, uh, if when we are talking, if we can avoid backbiting and useless talk and um, harming each other. Okay, so uh, I will read for you my note. And then I think we will move on to something very, very new. Oh, we didn't re read. Okay, I will read for you my note and then we will be reading five, Three Refuges and Five Precepts. So, Tom, you can always remind me, okay? In the first grade, I forgot the questions. Now, here, I almost forgot Three Refuges, Five Precepts. You can always yes, remind me, Venerable Sir. You, know, you yes, can remind me here in the chat box. If I don't read it, then I don't read it. That's the way it is. But you can remind me and there's some chance that I'll read it. Okay, so first I want to read for you my note. So this was about sleep. Did you and you were reading the second half of the of the chapter, right? I'm not hearing anyone. You are reading the second half of the chapter? Yes, I was yes, there. The... Okay, good. They, teens, need to get that good night's sleep right after studying for the exam. Just before you go to bed shouldn't be the first time you see the information. Your brain isn't that responsive. That is just a good time to, refu to review. So many students like to study before they go to sleep. But that's not the time to study. That's the time to review what you have already studied in the past. So ideally you study right after each class. When the class finishes, go through your notes. Give it three minutes to just skim. What did happen during that class? That's very much suggested by educational psychologists or whatever you call them. 
then when you go home, it's good to learn it. If you can memorize your notes, uh, then be careful because some teachers think that memorizing your notes is not enough. They want you to read the textbook so that you know perfectly what's in the textbook. Just memorizing the notes is not enough. When I was 15, I didn't know this. So I was memorizing the notes. Then I was writing the test and I was wondering why am I not getting A's? And then the teacher said, well, you didn't answer according to the textbook. I memorized the notes. I could recite to them word by word. But I didn't know what's in the textbook. So the teacher didn't give me proper mark and that totally discouraged me. It discouraged me so much that I didn't learn at all. <laughs> like from memorizing my notes, it came to the level when I just didn't learn anything at all. So um, in the end, I did pass to, to the higher grade, but it was very interesting. It was definitely very interesting. So uh, best is to review right after each class, then memorize, then memorize or learn at the time when you have some time. Let's say in the afternoon is pretty, pretty much uh, a recommended time or your Saturday, Sunday, or some people love to study in the morning. That's what I love. I love so much to study, to memorize in the morning. That for me, that works so well. And I remember it long time. Some people say if you memorize in the morning, it's easier, but you forget faster. If you memorize in the evening, it's more hard, but, it is, but you, memorize, uh, you memorize slower, but you remember it longer time. So um, it doesn't work for me. When I memorize in the evening, I usually fall asleep while I'm memorizing. So that's not very successful. But if I'm memorizing in the morning, you know, when I memorize in the evening, I'm sleeping. I fall asleep while learning. But when I learn in the morning, well, then I'm fresh and I learn easily. And moreover, I remember it for a long time. And I enjoy it very much. So, so studying in the morning is good. If you have been waking up at 6, try waking up at 5. All right. No idea how will you then make your 9 hours for sleeping, but uh, that's how I did it. So I was waking up at five in the morning and then I was studying until seven. Two hours I had bonus time every day. I enjoyed it so much and I could learn so much. Okay, and then the students in the districts whose schools started later. Oh, I feel like we were reading about this. Let's read something else. A blue light in LEDs, for, for instance, is healthy and can trigger ca uh, circadian rhythm, something both NASA and Russian scientists are tinkering with in experiments simulating a multi-year-long mission to Mars when astronauts' circadian ryth rhythms would be thrown into disarray. So LED doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, all right? The blue light doesn't necessarily mean that there is something wrong because it's a light from LEDs. So there is some more study, some more research to be done um, by us to learn more. What are those colors? I think some time ago I actually knew about it. But uh, there are lights which are helpful and there are lights which are harmful. So it's good for you to read about it, study about it. And you know what? I will share with you a very interesting document about sleeping. I will share with you a document about sleeping that I received recently from a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist in India from Marathi. And his lecture was translated into English and it is up to my understanding free for free for sharing it's called the epic about sleep 
There are some Indian themes, but that should not be a problem. It's based on modern research about sleeping. So I recommend any everyone, you can download this document and read it. This is a very, very powerful extracurricular reading for our class. I'm sure you will like it, but it's long. You know, it has excruciating, excruciating 14 pages. Okay, they are long pages, take some time to read. Oh, you actually got the one with my highlights, right? Okay, that's fine. Anyway, so you get with my highlights. So you know what? You can make uh, you can make use of this. And if you don't want to read it all, then just read my highlights. So you save time. My highlights are probably not more than about two pages of uh, altogether. So you can read the whole document. Or if you want to save your time and you want to just get the gist, then you can read the highlights alone. Okay, the yellow highlights. All right, so let's get to the recitation. I will share with you my screen and we will um, look at some Pali language. So I would like to ask everyone to unmute. Lamintuan. You can unmute. Tin Fu. You can unmute. Okay, so you can keep your hands together at the chest. Yamahang Vadami Tang Vadeta. Amabantu. Aham Bhante Aham Bhante Tisarane Nasaha Tisarane Nasaha Panchasilang Dhammang Yajami Panchasilang Dhammang Yajami Anugahang Katva Anugahang Katva Silang Deta Me Bhante Silang Anukampang Upadaya Anukampang Upadaya Duti Yampi Aham Bhante Duti Yampi Aham Bhante Tisarane Nasaha Tisarane Nasaha Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajami Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajami Anugahang Katva Silang Deta me Bhante Silang Deta me Bhante Anukampang Upadaya Anukampang Upadaya Tatiyampi Aham Bhante Tatiyampi Aham Bhante Tisarane Nasaha Tisarane Nasaha Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajami Anugahang Katva Anugahang Katva Silang Deta Me Bhante Silang Deta Me Bhante Anukampang Upadaya Anukampang Upadaya Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhassa 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 Dhammang Saranangga Chami Dhammang Saranangga Chami Sanghang Saranangga Chami 
ಗಚ್ಛಾಮಿ <laughs> ಸಮಾಧಿಯಾಮಿ <laughs> The second precept means I follow the precept of refraining from taking what is not given it means we never steal adinna dana vera manisikha padang samadhiyami adinna dana vera manisikha padang samadhiyami the third precept means I follow the rule of refraining from sexual misconduct kame sumiccha chara vera manisikha padam samadhiyami kame sumiccha chara vera manisikha padam samadhiyami the fourth precept means i follow the precept of refraining from false speech it means we never tell lies musa vada vera manisikha padam samadhiyami Uh, the last precept means I follow the rule of refraining from uh, taking drugs and drinking alcohol. Sura me raya majja pamada thana vera manisikha padang samadhyami. ಸುರಾಮೇಯ ಸಾಧ್ಯಂ ಪಾಂಚ ಶೀಲಂ ಧಮ್ಮಂ ಸಾಧು ಸುರಕ್ಷಿತ ಅಪ್ಪಮೇನ ಸಂಪಾದೇತ Amavandhi. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you soon attain the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Very well. So today, I will introduce you to Okasa. Okasa. Okasa is a recitation. It is a recitation that is not uh, done in Thailand or in Sri Lanka or in Vietnam. You will not find it there. No, they are not doing it. You will find it only in Myanmar. But it's good for you to know it because it's very basic recitation. Um... I am wondering if I should teach you the premise that says Okasa, but probably that's not necessary. Probably uh, we will make our own English version, which, uh, which you can follow so that um, you understand it. Because it doesn't make sense that I would teach you a few words in Burmese, uh, which has very specific pronunciation and the pronunciation is extremely difficult. at times difficult to understand for a non-Burmese person. So um, I think that doesn't make much sense. You know, for example, Pali pronunciation is relatively simple, but Burmese pronunciation is very complicated, let alone reading. The writing system is also fairly complicated, very different from English. So doesn't, it doesn't make much sense that we would be Uh, that you would be studying Burmese here. It makes sense to study Burmese, 
but not here in this class. So what you may like to, so we will probably have to talk about, you'll have to invent an English version. Maybe there exists one, and I have got one, but it's useless. The translation is so bad that we cannot use it. But um, I have never heard anyone saying Okasa in English. So probably that's something we'll start up, and it's definitely worth it. But you still don't know what it is, so that's what I'm going to dedicate to the remaining five minutes today. Okasa means excuse me. Okasa means excuse me. So who are you asking uh, excuse me? You're asking the Buddha and the Buddha's teachings Dhamma and the community of monks Sangha. Excuse me because you want to say something. When you want to say something to someone who is powerful or wise or special or rare person or highly positioned person, you would usually say, excuse me. And then you would say what you want to say. Okasa means, excuse me. I will probably ask you that next time, so you'd better listen and remember. So, okasa means, excuse me. And that's not just, that's just the first word that you say. There are many, many more words that we are going to th go through. This is a, a long list of very interesting things. And Burmese people usually recite this every single day. Many Burmese people will recite Okasa, but they will not meditate. For them, reciting Okasa is more important than meditation. Reciting Okasa is not mentioned in any Pali scripture, but it is in accordance with the Pali scriptures. It is very much following the Buddha's teachings, but it is not mentioned anywhere. Like, you know, in the form like, so you need to recite like this and like that. No, there is no such instruction to recite Okasa. So Okasa in our scriptures is just, excuse me, just the same way how you use it in English, the same way they used it in the Buddha's time. If they wanted to ask someone to just listen and the other person was powerful or special positioned or whatever, then they would say Okasa. And usually they would say it three times. So they would say, Okasa, Okasa, Okasa. And then you say whatever you want. You can say, Oh, Venerable Sir, you're breaking a rule. You would say, Oka, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Venerable Sir, you're breaking a rule. All right. So you can use it for anything you want. Whenever you want to say something, you will first say, Excuse me. And then you say whatever you want. Now, in this case, this is a special Okasa. And because it's very known Okasa throughout Myanmar, we just call it Okasa because that's how it starts. But now you know that Okasa just means excuse me, and from the word alone, we know nothing. You have no idea what the person wants to say. The person may criticize, the person may praise, the person may ask for something, the person may suggest something. You have no idea what this Okasa is meant for. But today we use the word okasa because only one version of recitation is so common that it's recited every day and starts by the word okasa. And we will be looking at that one version. And in that one version, you are requesting the Buddha, the Buddha's teachings, Dhamma, and the community of monks, Sangha, to forgive you if you did something disrespectful towards them. That is okasa. Now, while you can not ask anyone for forgiveness after killing, stealing, adultery, telling lies, drinking alcohol, or you can ask for forgiveness, but it will not help you much, you can ask for forgiveness after you do something disrespectful. Something disrespectful that did not involve breaking the five precepts. For example, you have a Buddha statue. You go around and unintentionally you bump into it. Well, that's not breaking of any of the five rules, but it is disrespectful. So then it is very powerful if you can then come to the Buddha statue and say, I'm sorry, 
or recite the full orgasa. If you, for example, put a Dhamma book on a floor and you unintentionally step on it or you unintentionally kick it, I hope you would not do it intentionally, then you will ask orgasa. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't mean it. That's what you would say to a human. Well, there's this book. But the book is very powerful. So we maintain respectfulness towards the Buddha's teachings by asking for forgiveness even from a book, even from a statue. We know there is nothing in the statue. No, nobody there is a stone. But there may be some deities who protect the statue. So you don't want to destroy statues even when you think they're ugly. There is a story in Buddhism uh, in Sri Lanka when uh, a chief monk received a large statue of the Buddha and he thought, oh, this statue actually is not beautiful. Then, with his assistant, they threw that statue into the river. And then, one day as they were walking, a tree fell right on their back and they ha happened to be humpbacked until the rest of their life. They were literally disabled until the rest of their life. And it's believed that it's because they threw the statue into the river. And do you know what happened with the statue? Somehow it appeared on a rock a little further away. And it's there until today. I myself went to see it. So that's pretty, pretty serious, isn't it? You know, you need to be careful about Buddha statues. There is a story from Thailand. When a man, a hunter, went to, uh, he went to a forest and he saw, I think he saw some Buddha statues or something, uh, or something he saw, something happened, and he was totally unsuccessful. He was totally unsuccessful in his hunt. Then he returned and he was so angry about the Buddha that he came to some place where are Buddha statues and he was slapping the, the backs of the Buddha statues. Or something he was doing, you know, violent to the Buddha statues. And then he returned home and he started to have a very serious illness on his skin. Extremely painful and he could not, you know, uh, walk and do whatever. He just had to lie in the bed. Then somebody came, a stranger, which means, if I say a stranger in this way, it means some probably a god taking a human form and coming to say something. So it's a stranger. And that stranger uh, came and suggested, well, what did he do after his hunt? Didn't he harm any Buddha statues? Or didn't he do anything like that? Perhaps if he apologizes, the disease will disappear. So they tried it. So they uh, apologized to the Buddha. So he apologized, the hunter apologized to the Buddha statues. Immediately, illness was gone. A child in Myanmar, you see, from all, all Buddhist countries, a child from Myanmar uh, peed at a Bodhi tree. Some Bodhi tree, not a big Bodhi tree or a famous Bodhi tree, some Bodhi tree close to the Golden Rock. Some of you maybe know the Golden Rock. Jai Tiyu. At the south, uh, in south of Myanmar. So when they were, uh, and I know personally one member of that family when uh, where that happened. So they were going from the Golden Rock, on which is a pagoda, which is believed to uh, to house a Buddha's hair, by the way. So they were leaving from this pagoda, and you have to go downwards from uh, on a on a mountain, and they were going a little down, and on the way they saw probably. You know, the parents, they were taking some rest and the child went to toilet. And the child went to pee at the Bodhi tree, at some Bodhi tree close by. Nobody knew every, anything. The parents even didn't know. I think they didn't even know that the child was peeing at the Bodhi tree. So then they went home and suddenly the child started to have a very, very serious sickness. And they were wondering, what could this be? How could this happen? Wow, how could this child have this sickness? No medicine helped. Nothing helped. Like in the case of the hunter. 
No medicine helped at all. And then they found out from the child that the child actually peed at the Bodhi tree. So they got the child to apologize, to recite Okata. In Burmese pronunciation, it is Okata. And the child recited Okata and has disappeared. So Burmese people are generally afraid that they may have done something disrespectful to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, and so they like to recite Okasa every day. And therefore they are free from this danger that they maybe have done something disrespectful and this could be a problem. Now I wanted to, uh, yeah, I know we are already over time, but the last point I want to tell you to show you that there is this difference between Gamma and disrespectful action. If you do bad Gamma, there's nothing you can do about it. No forgiving or forgetting will help you. If you, uh, if you repent, then the result will be small or, or the result will not harm you that much, but you will suffer anyway. There's no way how you can like remove the consequences of your bad actions or breaking the five rules. But if it is disrespectful, you can apologize. And if you apologize, then the consequences zero down. No consequence at all. If you do something disrespectful and then you apologize, you get zero consequence. That's the power of Okasa. So I would like to teach you in the coming classes, you will probably need two or three classes to get through all this. It's a lot. Be ready for a lot and a lot of very, um, very serious information, new technical information. Okay. Get ready a notebook. You will need a notebook either uh, electronic or paper notebook, you will need it for this class. Starting from next week, you will be writing notes. So I hope everybody will have their notebook ready so that when I say, so get ready your notebook, you will not say, oh, please wait, I need to get to my notebook. Or, oh, I don't have a notebook today, what can I do? No, please don't do that, okay? You have a whole one week to get notebook, either electronic or paper. You can write on your iPad or on computer or whatever, but you need to be ready to write notes because we will be writing quite a few notes starting from next week. Next homework will be just the adjacent, uh, just the adjacent chapter. Let's see what it is. It is taking risks. And that's relatively small, so let's read the whole chapter. Chapter 6, Taking Risks. It was a pleasure to see everybody, and I hope to see you next week. May you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you be successful in everything you do. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank you very much, Sandu. Everyone, can you please unmute? Can you put your hand at your chest, please? Now everyone together say goodbye, very Good Good share. Goodbye, very Good 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 Good